Caps playoffs on one channel, Orioles at the same time. Check with your system, because at Home Team Sports, with Home Team Sports, we do it all. This season, Home Team Sports brings you every hit, every save, and every goal from over 120 NHL hockey matches and the All-Star Game. Now it's time for the postseason when the action really heats up. You'll see the Smythe Division with Wayne Gretzky, Hock and Lube, and last year's Stanley Cup winners, the Edmonton Oilers. You'll see the Norris Division with Steve Eiserman of Detroit and Dennis Savard of Chicago. You'll see the Adams Division with Montreal's all-star defenseman Larry Robinson and super sniper Pierre Turgeon of Buffalo. And you'll see the Patrick Division, where home team sports brings you Lemieux and Hextall. And you'll see Cicerelli, Langway, Peters, Stevens, Ridley, Cortnall, and every Capitals home game throughout the playoffs. Finally, hockey's best teams face off in May in the Stanley Cup Championship. And you'll see every game right here and nowhere else on home team sports. Get the latest update on the Capitals and all the action from in and around the NHL with the Merchants Tire Capitals Report. Host Jeff Rimmer leads you through an in-depth and behind-the-scenes look at the Capitals with special guests, highlights, and more. One half hour before game time only on the home of the Capitals. Home Team Sports. The Pittsburgh Penguins are leading the Flyers by a score of 5-2. to two. And the Flyers, one of the better defensive teams in the league. The Penguins are the team that's down near the bottom in that category. But you might not be able to tell from this period. No, uh, obviously the game means something to the Penguins. We know that now. We speculated that it would mean a lot to them. And it sure, uh, it obviously does because they're playing a pretty good hockey game. The Flyers have a sizable uh, advantage in shots on goal over the Penguins in this hockey game, but it's big defensive breakdowns that have cost them, and it cost them uh, late in the, in the period. Also, a couple of pucks have found their way into the net that were kind of broken plays and low percentage plays uh, by the Penguins. So tonight, it's a kind of a combination of breakdowns at the wrong time for the Flyers so far, and, and things going into the net for the Penguins that normally wouldn't get in there. It's just an off night for the Flyers, but they got 20 minutes to go, but obviously a steep, steep hill to climb. Or is there ever. He'll have a chance to tell us straight the plays of this period, and we'll also update you on all the rest of the NHL action. All that coming up after these words. different Mercury Cougar with speed sensitive steering so ingenious it actually knows the difference between cornering and parking all this handling and the quality of a Mercury like a Mercury surprise here's the tickets for your honeymoon oh dad you shouldn't have and we're going with you oh, oh you, you shouldn't, shouldn't have, have. Northwest frequent flyers earn free trips fast, so you can give them away or go away or both. My mom's going to Tokyo on business. Tokyo, where's that? About a million miles away. Wow, she better bring a sweater. Every day, Northwest flies from more of the U.S. to more of Asia than any other airline. If you don't like the looks of your car, Shoot it. The son of a gun protect it from STP. If your dash looks dull, shoot it. Your seats are shot, shoot them. Your tires look flat, heck, shoot them too. Don't leave your roof a wreck. Give it some luster. Give your car high caliber protection. With son of a gun from STP. Son of a gun. What a difference. When you think of NHL officials, perhaps these three come to mind. We can assure you, though, that there's more to officiating in the NHL than just calling the shots. Someone has to record them. Ah, eight on the shot. Yeah. It's just one of the many responsibilities of the off-ice officials. They're hired by the league and stationed around the rink, watching and documenting all that occurs. We have 11 people on our crew. Uh, the, the positions that have to be filled are the two goal judges, game timekeeper, penalty timekeeper, statistician, and official scorer. Uh, we
we, we have 11 on the crew. In case somebody can't get here, we have backup people who are qualified to do any one of those jobs. Each job requires precision. Jim Nugent is the statistician. From his vantage point in the press box, he records shots on goal and keeps track of who is on the ice when goals are scored. He has a spotter to assist him. Next to the statistician is the official scorer. It is his responsibility to award goals and assists. In Philadelphia, Clay Mangles handles those chores by using a very simple yet exact procedure. Uh, I follow the play uh, with the numbers of the players who have touched the puck. Uh, when they lose possession of the puck, lose control of the puck, then I line through. They're no longer in the play. And then usually it jumps over to the other side, the other team. When a goal is scored, I circle a number of the guy who scored the goal and underline the two guys who get the assist, if there are in fact two. The criteria that I use when I award assists is control. Uh, and if a guy controls the puck, or what's very important from the standpoint of the puck going from point A to point B, then he should get an assist on it. Uh, there are times when a goal is scored, the referee, as a help to me, skates over to the announcer, Lou Nolan, and says number 10 on the goal. 99% uh, of the time he's right, and I agree with him. Uh, I have the uh, ability to look at an instant replay if there's any doubt in my mind. If I disagree, I'll tell him right at that point, no, Louis, number 10 is not on the goal, number 11 got the goal, and there's no question about it at that point. My decision is final. Across the ice in the penalty box area, the official game timekeeper and penalty timekeeper perform their duties. They work in conjunction with the referee, counting down the minutes. Official game time is recorded on the scoreboard. In the event that malfunctions, a backup stopwatch is also running. Five sparing and a game misconduct. When penalties occur, the timekeeper's responsibilities double. He gives the number of the player and says what the penalty was for in the number of minutes. And then it's recorded like this. Number 12, two minutes and for hooking. And then that's the way it's recorded by the penalty timekeeper. And the announcer makes the announcement just like that. And then it's recorded down on the end. Then as the clock runs, the time runs on the penalty. The same time the game clock runs, the penalty time runs down on that. The keenest eye and quickest hand belongs to the goal judge. Behind each net they sit, staring at their goal line, their fingers poised, ready to turn on the light to signify a goal. It seems like an easy job, just waiting for the puck to cross that line, but it's not. Lately, or in the last few years, there's been a lot of playing behind the net, which didn't happen until Gretzky came along. Uh, therefore, there's two or three players in back of the net, and they block your view. The upper corners of the, go of the uh, net are a little tough to see, right? You know, one can get in there and out in a, in a big hurry, and uh, unless you happen to see it or happen to see the net jump up in the air, well, you might have a problem. And of course, down low with the goalie stick in front of you, uh, it's pretty hard to see, too, and it's big glove. Getting the call right every time is difficult. Infallible, they aren't. Goals are disallowed, scoring changes are common. But these individuals are proud of the work they do. Records, awards, player incentives are all direct results of their efforts. And once the puck is dropped, destiny is in their hands. I love your new kitchen. Who did it? Sears did it. All of it? Even the new windows in the patio door. And the fence around the patio. Yeah, they gave us a free estimate, their famous satisfaction guarantee, even the financing. Ah, oh, you two always know the best deals. Ah, oh, Sears is the best deal I've heard of tonight. <laughs> Sears Home Improvements. Professionally installed, satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. Sears Home Improvement Professional. The most trusted name around the house. Hi, I'm Ray Gabler, a kitchen and bath designer. I've been with Sears for over 19 years. Sears can professionally design and remodel your kitchen from floor to ceiling. We offer a complete line of remodeling products from custom cabinets, floor covering, ceramic tile, lights, and any plumbing and electrical work needed to get that job done. We've been in business for over 100 years and offer satisfaction guaranteed, as well as a financing plan for almost any situation. Contact your nearest Sears professional designer.
1989 NCAA Division I Men's Lacrosse Championship, where those who stick with it reach their goal. Five to two, and Mario Lemieux got it going in the second period. That's what we'll look at first in our Telestrator segment. Flyers have covered pretty well in different portions of this hockey game, but they've let down at other times. Paul Coffey here has a head of steam on, and he's going this way, but now he doesn't have the puck. Puck is out here, and this Penguin overskates it, but watch Coffey come zipping and ripping through the neutral zone, and I gotta tell you, it's easier said than done to stand up on Coffey. We'll stop here and show you that now that Coffey has gained the zone, and both Jay Wells and Gordy Murphy have backed off, Paul Coffey has time. We talk a lot about space and time. Murphy's right here. He basically had to back up because he has a penguin that's going wide here. Jay Wells, if he stands right up in Coffey's face, has this penguin also crossing the blue line, so it's a two-on-one situation. The penguins, by having a lot of guys up on the play, complicated matters for the Flyers' defense. Stop here for a second, and you'll see that Jay Wells deflected the pass that came from here, but he deflected it right back here onto a penguin stick. And now you'll see that Mario Lemieux and Bob Barry are going to have a two-on-one situation right with Gordy Murphy in front of the goal. Can we stop it here now? Jay Wells is here. He's watching the play, and he is making a move towards Mario Lemieux, but I'll clear it, and you'll see that as the puck here comes across to Lemieux, Jay Wells gets there, well, just a hair late. Bingo, Mario Lemieux puts it home, and that made the score three to two. Okay, here we go again. The Flyers are pressing. Wendell Young behind the net was being pressed. Puck comes around here, but watch Paul Coffey. He is gonna come into play on this one as well. Okay, let's stop. Coffey has just broken up the play. He's going to head man the puck. But keep your eye on how quickly Paul Coffey gets back into the play. Nice pass. Now watch Coffey. One, two, three, four, five strides, and away he goes. Now we'll stop, and we'll show you Brian Prop was just cruising back through the neutral zone this way. He took a token hook at Robbie Brown. He's got Mario Lemieux coming this way. Two penguins over here. You've got to take somebody. Brian Prop will continue to cruise into the zone, and will pick it up, and he never does take anybody. Stop here now. Mario Lemieux is here. Robbie Brown is here. If Mario Lemieux goes wide, then Prop can take it. But watch Lemieux will go wide. Prop then decides to take Brown. Too late. You got to take somebody. And here's the last goal that the Penguins scored. It's really a, a two on two situation. Now, if the Flyers defense shift with Gordon Murphy coming over here to face this attacker and Jay Wells shifting over here so that he can face this guy coming straight on, then they line up the two on two directly, but they don't. Watch this. Stop here. You can see that both of them came together and played the one. That gave Kevin Stevens a chance to go wide. But with a little bit of help from Ron Hextall, Gordon Murphy and Jay Wells could have been saved on that one. That goal happened five seconds before the end of the period. But Lemieux's 84th from Brown and Airy. Then Brown is 49th from Coffee and Airy. And Stevens is 12th from Cullen and Zalapsky. 5 2 Penguin. On your path to success, reach for America's strongest financial helping hand, Citicorp and Citibank. More American families own their own homes and attend college with our help. And more get what they want with MasterCard and Visa cards from Citibank than from any other company. We also serve millions of customers in every major marketplace worldwide. Citicorp. Because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Second period at Madison Square Garden. 
far as the Flyers are concerned, the Islanders are doing the job they want them to do, but Flyers have to do something themselves. And Pittsburgh has come in, done a splendid job. Lemieux has been involved in one of the goals, and that's certainly a heartening sign, too, for a team that scored five so far through two periods that the guy they count on so much hasn't been as necessary as most times. Lemieux, I think, for himself, would like to get a couple more points so he'd hit the 200-point mark. But right now, the Penguins are starting this third period in pretty good control with a 5-2 to two lead over the Flyers. So this period will show how badly the Flyers want to grab third place in the division and play the Penguins a lot more. Here is Acton trying to reach, but instead it is brought back up by Callender. Callender ahead, hands over for the drive by Cullen, and that one went wide. Then it's turned back along for Callender, who flung one in front. Knocked down to the ice was Cullen, and Jay Wells just retrieving his stick as Gord Murphy plays. Murphy now with a pass that went beyond the reach of Eklund, and it is Dahlquist back for the Penguins. Shuffles it along to Cullen. John Cullen bounces it around, and Hextall is there. Taps for Jay Wells, then it's spun along to Prop, and Prop on over to Murphy. Murphy up the wing, and trying to get to it is Ron Sutter. Sutter centers one, and Prop a back and he scores! Well, Brian Prop does his own damage in the slot. I telestrated him standing in the slot, not checking anybody during the intermission, but this time Brian Prop finds himself alone long enough for Ron Sutter to thread out a really nice pass to him on his backhand, and Brian Prop slid that one perfectly to Wendell Young's left and closed the gap to 5-3 now. For the Flyers' sake, a good goal to get not only because it gets them back to within two, but it gives them something to build on here in the third, and here they come again. Here's Prop trying to feed one in front for Tockett to kick behind. Spun back off for Airy, but picked up by Lemieux. Lemieux checked from behind by Sutter, and along it's Airy, and he fires, and that one trapped by Hextall, and Hextall will just hang on. Score is 5-3 here, Pittsburgh. 5-3 Islanders over the Rangers in the second at the Garden. Hi, interested in the Toyota Celica? It's beautiful, and it's an excellent value. And right now, the Celica GTS is available with a special extra value package of features, like air conditioning, AM, FM radio with cassette, and much more. At savings of up to $1,050, it's a great value. So you like it? I love it. Toyota's special option package makes the Celica a great buy. Who could ask for anything more? I'm Ed Randall in the Sports Nightly Studios in New York at Madison Square Garden in the second period. Islanders up 4-3 when the Islanders' Alan Kerr pokes in this loose puck past John Van Beesbrook. It's now 5-3 Islanders. Now back to Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement in Philly. Mario Lemieux couldn't shake through Murphy. And along with it is Wells to turn it up to Smith. Then ahead it comes to Scott Mellonby. Mellonby fires and that one snapped out of the air by Young. Young held it for quite a while and turned it into the shins of Poulin. Then along for Scott Mellonby. Mellonby hands it back to Hoffman. He shoots one that bounced off of Rob Brown, and it's nudged ahead, and here's Brown coming ahead. Hands on to Lemieux, then across for Paul Coffey. Coffey challenged by Huffman, and the play broken down, and Dave Poulin can start it back. Coffey goes down, and we'll get a stoppage of play and a penalty coming up to the Flyers with 17.38 to go in the third. Pittsburgh leading by two. like the looks of your car, shoot it. With Son of a Gun Protect it from STP. If your dash looks dull, shoot it. Your seats are shot, shoot them. Your tires look flat, heck, shoot them too. Don't leave your roof a wreck. Give it some luster. Give your car high caliber protection. With Son of a Gun from STP. Son of a Gun. What a difference. We'll pick this up at the bottom of your screen. Paul Coffey's actually being held a little bit by Kerry Huffman. Then he tries to push himself away. But just a little tug sends Coffey sprawling. There's Kerry Fraser. 
Calling the shot. Can the Leafs do it? One to nothing, Toronto in Chicago in the first period of that one. Quebec has a 2-1 lead, or check that, Buffalo a 2-1 lead on Quebec in the third. Boston leading Hartford 2-1 in the third. For Hartford to get third, Hartford must win, Buffalo must lose. Here it must be a Flyer win and a Rangers loss for the Flyers to wind up with third place. Two-line pass stops the clock. Clock shows 17-14 remaining here in the third. A year of up and downs for Paul Holmgren. November definitely is worth one. And a year of up and downs for Gene Ubriaco after a great first three quarters, the Penguins went into their late season swoon. And thanks to the Rangers struggling and the Flyers struggling down the stretch. And the Devils and the Islanders simply dying off. The Penguins are in the playoffs for the first time in six years. Poulin on the draw with Quinn. The puck comes back to Kartner. Steps to the slot and blasts one that goes wide. There'll be a penalty coming up. Loose puck sent to the front, and the Penguins finally touch. That will cancel the minor penalty assessed to Huffman. And in a minute 28, barring further penalties, the Flyers will have a 32-second power play. Terry Gardner has to be happy about the Penguins getting a penalty, but he's frustrated that this one didn't make it home. Nice move by Kartner. Finds a seam and steps in between two Penguins. Cross-checking is the call. And I know that part of Karkner's frustration was with the fact that he shot wide. There's the cross-check. You just saw it. Golapski cross-checking, so that evens the score. Seven minors tonight on Pittsburgh, six on the Flyers, a major penalty apiece. Flyers eventually, barring any further penalties, will get their fifth power play. Penguins had a very short fourth. Keith Acton will be in for the draw, and he'll be accompanied by Murray Craven up front with Kartner and Chikrin in back. Jim Johnson will play defense for the Penguins with Paul Coffey. And the Penguins will use Robbie Brown and Mario Lemieux as forwards. Lemieux wins. Johnson takes. Clock ticks down to an even 17 minutes to go here in the third period. Rob Brown trying to get to this one, but all the way down it goes, and Hextall watches, then tips it along to Chikrin. Jeff Chikrin's pass is on to Craven. Guides it back across to Acton. Acton tries to feed it up the wing, but can't. Now on second effort, chops it in deep, and along to get it is Coffey. Coffey drilled it off, and Chikrin right there to get it. Moves in, fires, and a stick save made by Wendell Young. It is Kartner dropping it along, and Rob Brown able to step away with it. Lays it over for Lemieux. Feeds to Brown all alone, and Hextall fanned on it, and so did Brown. Back up ice with it comes Keith Acton. Acton steps away from one. In 40 seconds, they'll get a power play. Acton moving in with a shot that's turned away by Young. Then it's dropped off the glass, but Wells is right there. Wells falls, but then pumps it back to the corner. The good thing Jay Wells got that when Robbie Brown and Mario Lemieux had sagged in behind him. They were just going for a quick break. They might think they have this one sewn up, but the Penguins can't just take this one easy. They don't have this one. Mantha's drive goes wide. Now it's Wells laying it back off, still in an even but shorthanded situation for both teams. It is Wells turning against Paul Coffey and the puck picked up by Acton and back it comes to Mantha. His pass broken up and here come the Penguins. Lemieux feeds it up to Brown. Brown moves in and shoots. Save made by Hextall and he'll hang on. And then Wells knocks Lemieux down. Well, Mo Mantha found himself in a pretty tough situation, self-created that it was, but he really reacted well. He positioned himself perfectly between Rob Brown and Mario Lemieux and you know that Brown wanted to try and thread it through to number 66, but he just couldn't because Mo Mantha sealed off the pass. This play a little earlier was Lemieux through to Brown, and Brown had to go off the back of his stick just long enough to give Ron Hextall a lead on what was going on and give him time to react. Uh -huh. 
next off here is out at the face off the Islanders ahead of the Rangers five to four now in the second period so the Rangers have gotten one meanwhile it is the Flyers trailing here by two 15 20 to go in the third period power play is on for them now they have just a dozen seconds left on an abbreviated power play Kartner a shot that one knocked down by Dahlquist right in front oh and Young got the glove down on it in the crease Penguins really have their hands full when Rick Tockett and Tim Kerr are out at the same time on the power play. And it's just a, it's a matter of force, physical force. Deneen and Dahlquist killing penalties. Rick Tockett right in front. And Tim Kerr is just able to outmuscle Deneen and get good wood on it. Rick Tockett has Dahlquist all over him, but is still able to get a shot away. Big, strong guys that won't be denied are giving Wendell Young his share of headaches. Shot number 30 on goal for the Flyers. So you can see they've had their chances on Wendell Young. Ron, go ahead. Boston's leading Hartford 2-1. to one. Kind of amusing score in a sense, isn't it? Yeah, Hartford kind of likes to play Boston a lot. Boston has a hand in things, but again, as this one doesn't matter, if the other one goes one way. Buffalo has the lead on Quebec, two to one in the third. Tarkner a shot, blocked down by Young, rebound, and Tockett had a shot that's blocked away. Now here's Rick Tockett pivoting, forced along by Jim Johnson, and then Sutter taken to the wall by Deneen. Still the battle continues. The teams are at full strength. 31 shots for the Flyers and 18 for Pittsburgh. As Deneen takes out his man, that was Brian Propp. Shoved through Lemieux and popped in the air by Tockett. Bounced off of Sutter. And then prop a backhander. And that one flung away by Zalapsky. And the Penguins just lifted back out of play. Down to the ice went Tockett. Off the ice will come a Penguin. And the Flyers will get a full-fledged power play. With 14.33 to go in the third. They're down by two. At Home Team Sports, we've got a problem. We've got so much action and so little time. So, what do we do? We do it all. April 5th and 6th. See Caps Playoff on one channel and the Orioles on another channel at the same time. Check with your cable system. Because at Home Team Sports, we do it all. Backhand chance by Brian Propp. Right here from the slot. And the Penguins end up being called in a penalty. There was on the left of your screen. And it was Deneen. You couldn't see, but it was Gord Deneen that cross-checked the flyer down. So the crowd is ready to cheer him on here. There's no scoreboard here to tell them what to do. They have reacted to the out-of-town scoreboard, which shows the Islanders leading the Rangers 6-4 to four in the second. But they know that they can inspire their team, and they feel that right now this is a team that needs it. They had a 2-0 lead, and the Penguins got the next five. Brian Propp got one here early in the third, and the Flyers with a power play. They are two for the prior five on the night and need to get back to within one. Mike Bullard starts ahead. Pursued by Zalapsky. Puts on the brakes and is chased off. Tockett tried to pump it back to Wells, but Mario Lemieux prevailed. And it's turning Gord Murphy to bring it back. Murphy flips one through that is handled by Young. And Young lost an impressive one all the way down the ice himself. Backhand scooper. That wasn't a shot. He just shoveled it. Murphy, Bullard, Wells, Tockett are out for the Flyers along with Tim Kerr. Buck swept along by Murphy, up to Tockett. Steps along in the shadow of Kerr, pursued by Lemieux. Tockett in deep, rolled it around, and Mike Bullard steps to it, but it is Loney getting there. Loney's pass deflected by Bullard. In traffic, could not be held by Gord Murphy. Bullard back to Wells, and along now to Murphy. Pass went through Tockett, but moving to it is Kerr. Kerr wrapped by Buskis. Back to get it is Lemieux. Kerr taken down, and Lemieux clears. Anytime Mario Lemieux picks up the puck and just rifles it down, you know he's thinking safety first. Mario's not even gambling out there. I expected him to be looking for a long pass, possibly a breakaway pass to lengthen this lead, open it up a little more. 
but he actually backchecked like a demon a couple of times, killing penalties there. So that tells you how much Mario Lemieux wants to avoid playing the Flyers. Icing called against the Flyers while on the power play. They have 33 seconds to go in the man advantage situation. As you see Lemieux at the bench, Buffalo has taken a further lead on Quebec, 3-1 to one in the third. And an ironical twist to all this, if the Islanders win tonight and Quebec loses, by virtue of the win, the Islanders will have more victories than Quebec. They'll be even in points. And Quebec, on the final night of the season, by losing, will get the first overall draft pick in Minneapolis in June. The Islanders will pick second. <laughs> You know, believe it or not, some teams don't, if there's not a clear-cut winner in the draft sweepstakes, like a Mario Lemieux or a Wayne Gretzky, a lot of teams would rather have the second pick, would they? Just so that they don't have to undergo the scrutiny for years to come of how they did with the number one pick overall. There's that much pressure involving, you know, picking the number one pick if you're management that has to pick number one overall. Buck swung back into Hextall. Hextall spins it back off to Karkner. Although it is interesting to us, and the reason I sort of chuckle about it is that I don't think the players are really preoccupied with their team's drafting position during the course of games. But it's interesting to watch how all of these things unfold, uh, often unbeknownst to the players. Here is Eklund. Back to Mantha. Mantha shot, and it's tipped wide by Prop. Drilled back off, and it's Eklund there. Has a duel on his hands, as out of the penalty box now comes Deneen as the Penguins killed off another one, and Mantha with a shot. And that one blocked off, and everyone looking for it. It must be hung up in the equipment of the Penguin player. I got it somewhere. Where is it? <laughs> there it is. I know it's here somewhere. Oh. It's funny. Check this out. Button, button, who's got the button? I right. thought he was about to pull it out. All right. There we go. All right, strip search. Strip search. <laughs> that actually was a real nice block by Deneen. Momenta wound up. He had Tim Kerr in front. And Deneen, out of the penalty box, was able to pretty well choke off the play. Literally. Yep. Puck flipped back out again, and Kartner goes to get it. Now, the teams are at even strength. 12, 14 to go in the third period. Flyers have to have two to force overtime. They trail in the game 5-3. to three. Ahead comes Prop, laid it through Tockett, and it is Kevin Stevens spinning it back up now to Cullen. Cullen on the wing to Jock Callender, and Callender scoops it back up to Cullen again. Flips one that's off the outside of the goal, and Rick Tockett steps to it for the Flyers. Tockett pursued by Stevens, and that one floated away from him. Chikrin will go back to get it. Toronto leading Chicago now, 1-0 in the second period of play. On comes Ron Sutter, taken to the boards by Coffey. Sutter escapes. Checked off by Coffey. Still the battle on, and Tockett can't get away with it. Dumped back over for Jock Callender. Callender couldn't lift it, Prop was in the way. Then back for Sutter, couldn't get it to Tockett. And it's Wendell Young, given a hit from behind by Tockett. Puck along the boards, kicked back in deep by Murphy. Around now to Ron Sutter. Centers one that is slipped right back out again by Callender. Shift change on as a tired bunch of Penguins come off, replaced by Bork as well as Quinn and Cunningworth. 11 minutes to go in the third. 5-3 Pittsburgh. Phil Bork brings it ahead along with Quinn. Bork got a good shot away, and Hextall will just hang on to this one. 10-52 left to go in the third period of our game tonight from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. I love your new kitchen. Who did it? Sears did it. All of it? Even the new windows in the patio door. And the fence around the patio. Yeah, they gave us a free estimate, their famous satisfaction guarantee, even the financing. Ah, oh, you two always know the best deals. Ah, oh, Sears is the best deal I've heard of tonight. <laughs> Sears Home Improvements. Professionally installed, satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. Sears Home Improvement Professional. The most trusted name around the house. Well, Dan... 
Keith Acton. Quinn on the night has a couple of assists on the first two goals, and those were significant because the Penguins were down in the first 10 minutes, 2-0, but got two in just over six and a half minutes to not the game and then build on it from there with three second period goals before Brian Propp answered one of them here early in the third. Five to three the score. Flyers are trailing the Penguins here. Puck pops out of play and there'll be a neutralized face off to result. Well Paul Holmgren can sure be proud of his assistance this year. The Flyers special teams were basically entrusted to the assistants Andy Murray and Mike Eves. There's Mike Eves with the headset on. And the power play rose from number 16 overall in the National Hockey League last year to number one in the span of one year. Okay, Tim Kerr is back in the power play, but that's more than just Tim Kerr. This power play has worked hard all year, gone out to practice early, worked on a lot of things, and because of the sophisticated system that Andy Murray and Mike Eves have brought to the power play, they've come right to the top. Something to be proud of. Here is Chikrin dropping one along that is cut off by Dahlquist, and... Dahlquist is able to steer it back ahead to Quinn. Quinn given a good hit by Karkner as this one is spun behind by Hextall. Around it comes for Karkner and then set up for Eklund. Eklund now weaving his way through the traffic. Hands back over to Acton. Drops it back to Eklund. Eklund shook one checker. Fed for Murphy. Hurried one in on goal. That was an easy one for Young. But it is Murphy right back over to keep play alive. Dan Quinn steps to it for the Penguins. They are trying to put it by Jay Wells and succeed. Murphy goes back to get it, looks toward Wells and toward Acton, and will carry it back up himself. Sends one off the boards, and Rick Tockett's the first one there. Tockett gliding behind. Moves it back to Murphy again. Murphy deals to Bullard. Finesse move. Gets away from one to Tockett. Oh, and a save. And the rebound comes back to Wells. Back to Murphy. Drive! Deflected, losing his stick is Wendell Young. Meanwhile, the play develops around the wall. Young has now retrieved his stick as the puck is taken by the Penguins and Airy. Leads it back ahead to Paul Coffey. Coffey spins it back in deep and going to get it as well. Clock now down to nine minutes and five seconds to go in this third period. Loose puck and nearly getting a good stuff attempt was Brown as the puck held by Hextall. It was a pretty good stuff attempt if Ron Hextall doesn't have his skate just jammed to the post. Number 44 of the Penguins is able to put it down, but boy, Jay Wells cleared him out quickly. Watch the action at the other end. A lane opens up as this shot comes in on Wendell Young, but watch Wendell Young now. See, he ends up sitting down. Now, I don't know if he's going to come back into the picture. He was still sitting down. You can see he's all twisted up with his stick. He hooked himself with his legs around his own stick and couldn't get up and was sitting down most of that sequence. Wendell Young will watch the action all the way at the other end. Mario Lemieux to take the draw with Dave Poulin. That's what it looks like from his end of the ice. And it's been a busy end of the ice all night long. The Flyers have outshot the Penguins 35 to 20. Pittsburgh leading 5-3. Dave Poulin got by Coffee and then went down as he had passed ahead. Now it is Johnson, but Poulin moving to it. Poulin in front and Smith the shot. He scores! What a big goal by Derek Smith. He stays right in front of Wendell Young. And you know, Young even got a piece of it. But to show you how much the Penguins broke down on this, nobody was in front. And there were two flyers there. Paul Coffey was moving out to this play. But Derek Smith has just scored a huge goal. Young came close to getting it, but not close enough. With 8.42 to go in the game, the Flyers lead by one. Kind of unusual in the sense that Derek Smith usually digs in and back checks as soon as the opposition turns the puck over. But he waited there, and sooner or later the puck came back to him to see he's a happy guy. The Flyers have closed to within one with eight minutes to go. Lots of time left. Poulin gets the only assist on Smith's goal at 16, or rather 11-18, Smith's 16th of the year. Well, it's tightened up now. Pittsburgh by one. At Madison Square Garden, the Islanders leading by two. Both games are in the third period. 
Wendell Young stops it. Puck picked up by Zalapski. Cruising on out with now 8.05 to go in the third. Puck skipped around toward Hextall, but we get an offside call stopping play. We'll return to the Spectrum in Philadelphia in just a moment. If you ask every American the meaning of success, you won't hear the same answer twice. Whatever your idea of succeeding, Citicorp and Citibank can help. With Citibank MasterCard and Visa cards, Citicorp Savings, Diners Club, and Citicorp Mortgage. We also serve millions of customers in every major marketplace worldwide. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. the patriarch of the Flyers, along with his wife Martha watching the game here tonight. 8.04 to go in the third. The team that Ed helped found in 1967, hoping to move up to third place in the division on the final night of the year, but trailing the team that is second and would be the eventual opponent 5-4. to four. Chikrin along now to Rick Tockett. Tockett moving in, but the Penguins close rank. Zalapski tested by Prop. Tockett moves in, but it's bounced back across, and Troy Loney is there. Hit by Sutter. Still, they work it along the boards, and the puck pops high from Tockett and chopped back in by Chikrin. Flyers clear the zone, so this play will result in an onside work by the Penguins, and it is swung back between the point men and down. Mike, the Flyers have simply taken the boards away from the Penguins in the Penguin zone, and the Penguins aren't putting it hard around. They're putting soft ones around. That's what led to Derek Smith's goal. Bus just finally just went back and jammed one out, but the Penguins have stopped trying to bring the puck up the middle of the ice, as a lot of teams do when they kind of go into a prevent defense. They're putting it around the boards, but if they do, they got to put it hard. The Flyers are just eating them alive right now on the boards. Bullard, Craven, and Mellonby, the line out now with Wells and Gord Murphy in back. And it is Cunnyworth as well as Callender up front, working along with Phil Bork and the back line, Coffee and Jim Johnson. Puck spun by Young around and taken by Bullard. Had his shirt pulled from behind. And then it's rolled along by Murphy to Mellonby. Mellonby feeds one in front. And Bullard tightly checked by Coffey. Sonnyworth brings it back up ice. Big drive. And that one snared by Hextall. And Hextall swings it all the way back down the ice himself. This will be an icing call against the Flyers. Six minutes and 23 seconds to go in the third. Pittsburgh five, Philadelphia four. Sports Channel National Hockey League game was sponsored by Mercury Sable, where comfort and control are one. Gretzky. And they score! With two seconds left! Lemieux. Burke. Shot save, Burke! Every hit, every shot, every save. With more games than ever before, watch the NHL's brightest stars shine. Islanders are hanging tough over the Rangers, 6-4 in the third period. These people can see the scoreboards at either end of the ice here at the Spectrum. You watch Lemieux ricochet one off Dave Poulin and wide. The puck pops back onto Smith. His pass missed for Kartner, but Kartner followed up. So Zalapski popped one back up. Lemieux couldn't get it, and on with it now comes Smith. Tried to shake one through, but it's Zalapski bouncing one out. Now Terry Kartner. Flips one along that is tipped further, and Lemieux goes to get it. Then to Zalapski and across to Deneen. Flyers turn to play. Jeff Chikrin matched up with Kartner on defense. Chikrin able to wind his way up ice and pass on to Poulin, who steamed one back in deep. Deneen tests with Derek Smith. Well kept it. Flip one in front. Save. Rebound went wide from Poulin. Now Derek Smith trying to get away. It's Poulin taking, wants to get to the front, centered one, and here comes Lemieux with Rob Brown, and right now only Murphy is back, hustling to get back at Jay Wells. As Lemieux moves in and fires, he hits the goal post. Man, oh man, and it's entering pass. It's controlled by Derek Smith and swept back out of the zone. Oh, 5-10 to go in the third. Back on with it comes Johnson, a pass from Lemieux, went away from Rob Brown, and he's knocked down by Eklund. Here is Keith Acton. 
bringing it back up with five minutes to go. Shovels back for Eklund, and the shot went wide. Jab back out by Loney. It is Hextall there, turning it over to Murphy. And Murphy looks toward Acton and puts it off his stick. Drilled right back in by Quinn. How close it might have been a two-goal advantage had Lemieux not hit the post. But there were a couple of tries at the other end in which the Flyers nearly were able to snake one home themselves that would have tied the game and brought the house down. That pass sailed by Eklund and Young way out of his goal, trying to hold it as Acton. Kartner battling too, but Dan Quinn able to muscle it further, and here comes Stevens. Stevens with a couple of goals already. Feeds to Quinn, and he shoveled it wide. Tight checking by Tim Kerr. Eklund, nice little pass on to Terry Kartner. Wheels in with Sutter. Kartner tried to flip one, but it was tipped in the air by the Penguins and guided back out of play by Quinn. Do you need a breather? We do. 3.56 to go in the third. 5-4 Penguins. If you ask every American the meaning of success, you won't hear the same answer twice. Whatever your idea of succeeding, Citicorp and Citibank can help. With Citibank MasterCard and Visa cards, Citicorp Savings, Diners Club, and Citicorp Mortgage. We also serve millions of customers in every major marketplace worldwide. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. This is about as animated as I've seen Paul Holmgren, and he's still not real animated, but keep in mind the Flyers can't use a tie tonight. No matter what happens in New York, a tie will not help the Flyers. They have to win here, and the Rangers have to lose for the Flyers to move up in the standings. If they should pull even, it might bring up an interesting situation in overtime. Should overtime wear down, we'll see really who Paul Holmgren wants to face and who doesn't want to face, because it could be a goaltending pulling situation to try and move into third place in order to play the Penguins instead of the Capitals. But First things first, Flyers need a goal to tie this. Ron Sutter on the draw with John Cullen. Karkner and Chikrin in back. But it is Zalapsky pivoting to control for the Penguins' defense. Off the stick of Cullen. Three minutes, 45 seconds to go as Chikrin flipped one into the glove of Callender, and that one turned back, and Karkner goes to get it. Brian Prop working up front along with Tockett and Sutter. And it is Prop who skied one off Zalapsky back in deep. It flops near Cullen. Ron Sutter goes barreling in and centered. But Kevin Stevens was right there. And it'll be Chikrin pivoting to play. Off the stick of Callender. And that one floated out of play. And so once again, there'll be a Pittsburgh defensive zone faceoff. Well, we mentioned earlier in the game that Andy Murray is only a couple of seats away from us. And there he sits. And I'll tell you what, I've never met anybody that can see it like Andy Murray can from a press box. That is his view. That's just about our view. We're just a couple of seats over to the right. We sit right beside the camera. And on the other end of the headset is Mike Eves. They go back and forth and do it pretty well. Then Mike Eves will relay whatever information he has to to Paul Holmgren. They try and look for tendencies on both teams. Line combinations that the opposition is using. Situations that the Flyers aren't taking advantage of. They make adjustments between periods. Most coaching staffs wa watch a, a lot of videotape, and this one no exception. Into the late hours, three on two, and that canceled by an offside with 3.03 to go here in regulation time. Gene Ubriaco has Rick Patterson alongside. Remember him, the one-time Chicago Blackhawk? Gene will walk back toward Rick, and we can see him again. That a boy, Gene. Gene Ubriaco <laughs> going up and down. <laughs> there, there are these steps back in there but most of the time when Ubriaco spends on the bench when the play is hot and going end to end or in the corners where he can't see here in the spectrum Ubriaco will end up up on the bench and the guy you're looking at Rick Patterson will climb up there as well Buck pops high and ahead it is brought by Bullard who fired one off the defense and wide it is Wendell Young forcing one around the board coffee moves in it is kicked along by Craven but now brought back up by the Penguins and here comes Mario Lemieux Floats one up the wing, and Rob Brown sweeps in and sent a shot wide. Just did not get full control. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third. Racing ahead, it's Murphy. Drops back to Kerr, and that one sticked away by Young. The rebound scooped along the boards by Johnson, pinching his partner, kept it alive. Then over to Craven. Out in front, and Miller to shot. Rebound, score! Timmy Kerr! It's tied at five!
Goal number 48 for Tim Kerr has tied this hockey game. Mike Bullard's shot is right at Wendell Young, and Young cannot handle the rebound. He spits it right up and coughs it right onto Tim Kerr's stick. Good play from Craven out in front to Bullard. Bullard off of Wendell Young, and Phil Bork, number 29 of the Penguins, cannot get to big man number 12, Tim Kerr, before he puts it home. And with 2.27 to go in this game in regulation, we might not even get a chance to see what Paul Holmgren would do in overtime. The Flyers still have a couple of minutes to win this tilt. Here comes Keith Axton with a tap on the wing that is gathered by Loney. Loney pops it out of play. And it's easy to be critical of the Penguins now, but they have been just simply tossing out. They've been able to get a couple of offensive. Lemieux hit the post, and Rob Brown had a chance, but basically the rest of them have been flinging it out of the zone. You bet. Remember earlier in the game, Mike, I said that the game could be won by the Flyers deep in the Penguins' zone, deep in their corners, because while the Penguins defensemen are good offensively, pass pretty well, rush pretty well, in general, they're not that good deep in their zone and in the corners, and that was a perfect example of it. The Flyers are just able to do too much business and had too much time to do it in deep in the Penguin zone. Bullard and Craven, the assist on Kerr's 48th at 17.33, and a shot ricocheted off of both Young and the post. Back to get this is Chikrin. Flyers are really knocking on the door now. Two minutes to go, third period of play as Chikrin dances away from Dan Quinn. Pass went too far for Acton and back down. Out of his net is Wendell Young. Puck forced around the wall by Zalapski, but to get it is Terry Karkner. Karkner breezes right back and makes the Penguins chase it to the corner again. Zalapski with it, wants to lift it out, and Tockett kept it alive. Moving along as Acton, couldn't get it to Tockett. Instead, it's dealt back off by Deneen, and the Penguins start up with a three-on-two, hustling to get back his prop. Pass dealt right back around to Phil Bork and a diving play made by Murphy. Rolled off but too far for Tockett. One minute and 20 seconds to go in the third. Game tied at five. Hextall controls, spins it back around for Jay Wells. It is Wells dealing it in deep. Young behind and Kerr right after him so it's hurried off the glass but Wells kept it alive. Then Jimmy Johnson flung one around. Hustling to it is Jeff Chikrin, but it is tapped back out by Cullen. Final minute of play here in the third, and the puck lost it into the seats, and so again, we'll have a halt to the action. Oh. Boy, oh boy. What a hockey game. What a great last game of the season to get us ready for the playoffs. It has been intense. It has been end to end at times. It has seen a tying goal by Tim Kerr with 2.27 to go in the third period after the Flyers allowed the Penguins to score five unanswered goals. Here's the way it went. The Flyers opened up a 2-0 lead. Penguins then scored five, led 5-2, and in the third period, the Flyers have overcome a three-goal deficit. 5-5 now. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Mike Bullard picks it up. The ex-Penguin hands it over to Jay Wells. Drops it back off to Bullard again. Bullard wants to shake by, but it's knocked down by Lemieux. Buck flipped back along to Craven, and Craven tried to turn it, but instead it's Kevin Stevens. Stevens pass up the wing toward Lemieux. Lemieux pivot, shoved off by Wells. Buck comes back to Coffey, who fires, and that block high by Murphy, and Murphy is shaken. And the puck trapped by Bullard to get the stoppage of play, and immediately the attention shifts to Gordon Murphy, who's all hunched over. What a play by Murphy. The Flyers had stacked it up on the one side in defensive support, but the puck got loose to Paul Coffey right here. Coffey ends up getting it and ripping it, but watch Gordy Murphy go down. Times it perfectly, but he took that one on the arm. What a great last two games of the season for Gordon Murphy. Last night in Montreal, solid. Solid here tonight, one of the top ice time men in this game tonight. Mario Lemieux leads the way, but right behind him, Jay Wells and Gord Murphy have logged a lot. Incidentally, Kerr's goal gave him 329 for a career. He passed Rick McLeish, Brian Propp, Bobby Clark, and Bill Barber are the only three above Kerr in the overall goal scoring ranking. It is Sutter to take this draw with Loney. 
42 shots for the Flyers, 20 for the Penguins. Game tied at 5, 26 seconds to go in regulation. It is Terry Karkner to get it. Turns it along to Jeff Chikrin. Chikrin with a pass that went under the stick of Keith Acton and down. If the Penguins arrive first, it's an icing. They do, it is. 14 seconds to go, and back again, it'll come to Hextall. Boy, it, I'm sorry, Mike, go ahead. We'll repeat again, just uh, for those of you joining us, the Islanders are leading the Rangers 6-4 in the third. What the Flyers need to get third is a win here. A tie will do no good, and an Islander win over the Rangers. Flyers just have to hope this faceoff won't cost them. Ron Hextall is out consoling Jeff Chikrin. One of the few times I've seen Chikrin show emotion, other than when he's dropped the glove, but he tried that up ice pass to Keith Acton, and he got it a little elevated, and Keith Acton couldn't grab it. So it went all the way down the ice, and Jeff Chikrin just smashed his stick on the ice. But, but the only time I've seen the young rookie react that way this year. Of course, it's taken 79 games, 59 minutes, and 46 seconds. <laughs> Very he good. came through. <laughs> Sutter and Quinn for the faceoff. Jerry Pateman drops it. And ahead with it comes Tockett. Tockett with a pass off the boards. Wants to get to it, but Paul Coffey will go back. Coffey in the corner. Checked by Keith Acton. Three seconds to go. Puck wedged along the boards. Then pops loose. The horn goes. We're going to have overtime. An extra period necessary on the final night of the year. Ron Hextall has come to the Flyers bench and has seated himself, as you can tell. Both teams will take a breather here, and again, we could have a situation, which we did in Montreal last night, where the Canadians still wanted to have a hope of getting the President's Trophy, so in overtime, they pulled Patrick Roy for an extra attacker. The Penguins themselves had to pull their goaltender in overtime last year on the next to the last night. They were just in the process of doing it when Lemieux scored to put last year's final night theatrics into motion. That was the night that New Jersey scored in Chicago in overtime just before midnight to get in ahead of both the Penguins and Rangers. Here's a look at Tim Kerr's goal that tied this game. When he scored, there were two minutes and 27 seconds left, but Phil Borg just couldn't handle big number 12 of the Flyers. And Mario Lemieux in the third period clanked this one on a shot off of the goal post to Ron Hextall's left. So we'll see what Paul Holmgren wants to do. I think that Paul Holmgren would rather face Pittsburgh than either the Rangers or the Washington Caps. And the only way he can do that is to defeat them here tonight and allow the New York Rangers to take on the Washington Caps. You think in terms of what would happen should the Rangers go on to lose? They're trailing in the third by two, and the Flyers were to win in overtime. Then the Penguins would have the psychological problem to deal with of having been well ahead in the game, going into the third period and having yielded three, and then having lost in overtime, and having three days, or really two full days, and part of a third to recover and face that team on home ice with the home ice pressure yeah. that seems to be more significant now than the home ice advantage. Home ice hasn't been a huge advantage as the teams huddle. It hasn't been a huge advantage in the in the Patrick division this year. The top home ice team was the Washington Capitals and they had a 663 percentage. The worst, the New York Rangers at 564. So it was close. So it's interesting. This overtime now will boil down to who the Flyers want to play. Not the rankings. The Flyers could move into third, but the only way that would ever give them home ice advantage in the Patrick Division playoffs is if the New York Rangers happen to upset the Washington Capitals and the Flyers go ahead to beat the Penguins in that round, and then the Flyers face the Rangers. Are you with us out there? Stay tuned. It's fun, isn't it? Those of you who... Uh love to play with numbers and look at standings and size things up day by day. This has been a thrill for you, hasn't it? And of course, the theatrics continue in the Norris Division where Toronto has a 2-0 lead at Chicago. The winner of that one gets the final playoff berth and the right to meet Detroit on Wednesday. Off the opening face, off the puck comes to Gord Murphy. Murphy moves ahead, hands on for Keith Acton. Acton tried to start in, but 10 seconds after we start, we stop on the offside call. St. Louis beats Detroit 4-2. Buffalo has earned third and will face the Boston Bruins, a team to whom they did not lose all year. Quebec over Buffalo 
And Boston beat Hartford three to two in Boston. The Penguins have not had a shot on goal for the last nine minutes of playing time, plus the 15 seconds now in this overtime. Buck rolled back along. Wendell Young is there to get it. Moving with it is Paul Coffey. A pass ahead on. Lemieux would have had a breakaway had he been able to take the pass. Flung back along toward Brian Propp. It is Wells. Wells battling and Propp able to send it further. Every Penguin standing at the bench. Buck across now to Coffey. And Coffey lost the bouncer. Back near the goal and Hextall sweeps it around. Gord Murphy goes to get it. Murphy, the rookie defenseman, hands it back up to Sutter. A little drop to Rick Tockett. Here's Tockett moving on. Watched by Janine. The centering pass. Oh, and that one knocked loose. As trying to get to it at the front of the goal was Brian Traub. All the way down in descent. Icing will be called on Pittsburgh. And the clock stopped a minute and two seconds into overtime with the game being a tie, of course, and the score five. Boy, you don't think this is an intense time for rookie defensemen? We'll get to that in a second. First, this replay. Tockett out in front. Brian Prop jamming, looking for something, looking for a rebound. Finally goes down. And Zalapsky at the top right of your screen. Maybe we can let this one roll after Tockett goes through with it. Zalapsky has the puck. He's moving away now. Number 33, you can't see him, but he's heading up ice. Just a little bit of token pressure, Mike, and he dumped it all the way down. So now after Jeff Chikrin icing the puck with 15 seconds to go in regulation, all of the icings are so key now in overtime, and that was Zalapsky's rookie mistake late in the game. The man who got his 48th goal to bring the crowd to its screaming feet, Tim Kerr. That came with 2.27 to go in the third period and tied the game at five. The two big snipers from the two teams, Lemieux and Kerr, will test for the faceoff. Sutter and Eklund up front, Kartner and Chikrin in back. Off the draw, it is Zalapsky. Rolling one behind, Deneen able to force it off to Loney. Can't jam it by Kartner. Up for grabs and the puck floated by Eklund who one hands it back to Chikrin. Chikrin's pass comes to Eklund again and it's dealt back in deep. Kerr going back for it, but pivoting is now Deneen. Kerr went down, got up slowly. Deneen the same. Puck poked back along and is turned back out by Kevin Stevens. Pivoting is Kartner, laying it back across on the stick of Eklund. Eklund pass taken off the boards as Ron Sutter is in. Gets away from Zalapsky, loses control, then centers, and Kerr was defended by Deneen and Murphy a drive, and that one floated off the boards. Sent all the way back out with 3.15 to go in overtime. Murphy taps back in. Wendell Young sets it up. It is Deneen advancing it back ahead, but off the stick of John Cullen. Knocked along by Murphy, but into Cullen, and the two of them cancel, and now they shove at one another. Meanwhile, it is Wells forcing one around that had a crazy bounce, maybe off the referee's gates, but is taken by Wells. 42 shots for the Flyers and 20 for Pittsburgh. Big drive, and that one off the glass. The Penguins have gone now over 10 minutes of playing time without a shot on goal. It is Murphy dealing it back in deep for Mellonby. Checked by Coffey, and Cullen is there. Back it comes along for Craven. Bounces one off the board, but this will be brought right back up ice by Johnson. His pass and a diving block of that one by Wells. Murphy will turn and go. He needs to turn this up ice and get a change. He is dead on his feet. He's had a long shift. All right, nice work. He's coming to the bench now. Craven on now to Kartner. Kartner, and then Craven had a shot at it, and Lemieux just is able to force it back out. Chikrin along to Tockett. Hammers one right in on goal, and Wendell Young made the stop. A knuckleball effort, and Young was in position to get his pad on it. Now it is rolled back by Arias. We're down to the last minute, 55. Not much forechecking now by the Penguins. Look, they're just waiting for the Flyers to come, and it's been all Flyers halfway through the third period. Because of that, they're back on their heels, and here come the Flyers again. This is Deneen, and icing is called against the Flyers. And there'll be a face-off to come back near Hextall with a minute 42 to go in the overtime. And ah. you see Keith Acton, rather tired, having been knocked down, getting an extra breather on the board. But Hextall will likely be pulled in the last minute or so of play. We just don't know, but we think that might be the case as the Flyers want to at least go all out and give this thing a try to win. Let me play psychologist for a second and think out loud. 
Paul Holmgren might not pull, pull Ron Hextall, but if he does and the Flyers don't end up scoring and don't end up moving ahead to play the Penguins, what does that do to the Washington Capitals sitting at home realizing that the Flyers don't want to face them? What kind of lift does that give them? A 30 second timeout called on Pretty good one, I would think. Yeah, I would also think that the Capitals might be aware, maybe they aren't, that nobody wants to play them in this division right now. That's my yeah, perception. Yeah, that's true. So it's hard that's to true. tell. See, and they say that hockey is not like baseball, where you can sit and mull this stuff over. We've got 30 seconds to do just that. But I guess it's an implication. It's implied that nobody wants to face them, but that would be coming right out and saying, hey, we don't want you guys. Yeah. Hey, listen, it's going to be tough one way or the other, no matter who faces whom, whether the Flyers face the Rangers or, well, that's out, whether they face the Penguins or the, or the Caps. The Caps are definitely the team to beat in the Patrick Division right now just because of the way they play down the stretch and because of the moves that they've made and the momentum that they have going in. But that momentum can be shattered in the first couple of games pretty easily. Chicago has scored. So now it is Toronto 2, Chicago 1 in the lone survival game of this final night of the season. The winner gets the last playoff berth and will meet Detroit. If there's a tie, Chicago will play Detroit. A team that they beat four times, lost twice to, and tied twice during the season. That is a second period score from Chicago Stadium. New Jersey had a 4-0 lead on Washington at one time, but now it's New Jersey 5, Washington 4 in the third. Yeah, that's good, Bill. That's something to think about, too, what you were just mentioning about pulling the goaltender. Fortunately, it's a decision that we don't have to make, nor do you. Only one person does, and that's Paul Holmgren. It is Murphy. Across now to Karkner. Spins it back in deep, and Wendell Young goes to get it, and here comes Hextall to the bench. We have our answer. Troy Loney feeds ahead to Lemieux. Tries to dance by Kerr. Tries for the empty net and gets it. In sudden death overtime, the Penguins have defeated the Flyers by a score of 6-5. to five. It will be the Flyers facing the Washington Capitals and the Penguins to host the New York Rangers as the Patrick Division playoff picture has been completed on the final night of the season. Take a fresh approach to your next vacation.